is John Watson. Arsenal welcomed by their fans in Highbury's impressive new North Stand. Those seven goals in Liège not only earned them a lucrative quarter-final against Torino, but also the title as the meanest side in the Premiership. They haven't scored a league goal since September the 25th, they haven't conceded one since before then, and they've lost just one of their last 19 games in League and Cup. Well, Anders Limpar and Ian Wright are restored to the side today. Paul Davis is rested, Alan Smith recovering from an ankle injury. George Graham conscious that Arsenal have a Coca-Cola Cup replay at Norwich on Wednesday, and if they win, they're at home to today's opponents, Aston Villa. Well, as for Villa, an antidote to their UEFA Cup exit is perhaps the fact that they have a fine record here at Highbury. Three wins and a draw in their last five visits, and they're also unbeaten away from home this season. Ray Houghton returns in midfield in place of Gordon Cowan. And among the crowd at Highbury, the England manager, together with his uh, wife Rita on the right and the FA's commercial director, Trevor Phillips, on the left. The referee is Martin Bodenham of Cornwall. I hope his green shirt doesn't clash with that of the uh, Aston Villa players, whose kit um, is hard to describe, but it does contain some green. Uh, what is certain is that Arsenal are playing in their normal red and white from the left. Atkinson, the Aston Villa manager, who was quoted as saying their performance on Wednesday was shameful. Limpar tripping small, coming inside Townsend. Lays it inside for Selly. But it's a goal kick. Anders Limpar, still a great favourite with the home supporters here, but not very often in the team. Offside flag was up there against Saunders, it's still up, the referee didn't see it, he hasn't seen it yet. And Villa play on, now that's uh, finally spotted. Fairly uh, quiet opening ten minutes, and uh, the ground is quiet too, whether the fans are uh, just a little bit um, dulled by the recent lack of goals here, I don't know. Here's Limpar. Oh, he's got round the back beautifully. It was Wright who had the header. Well, if there's one player who can lift the crowd here at Highbury, apart from Ian Wright, then it's Anders Limpar. He took on Brian Small, kept the ball just fine. And uh, Wright put the header some way away. Hesitation there, not by Seaman, uh, fortunately for Arsenal, it was by the defenders, that's Richardson, but the goalie is probably hurt now, David Seaman in agony, having made that desperate interception on the edge of his area, he's rolling around, holding his leg, and the England goalkeeper called upon there to save the situation, did himself some damage, the through ball by Richardson, defenders wait, in fact, they waited forever. Out came Seaman, in went Atkinson, not deliberately, of course, for the goalkeeper, but uh, he caught him. And that's brought Gary Lewin, the physiotherapist, onto the pitch in a hurry. And it will worry, uh, doubtless, among others, Graham Taylor. And Alan Miller must be uh, wondering if he's called into action or not here. Conversation between manager upstairs and coach downstairs has finally ended. The referee's gone across to um, retrieve the ball, and uh, it looks as though David Seaman is going to continue. This is a good turn by Wright. It runs on for John Jensen. Limpar, Wright. Seaman's condition causing enough concern for the Arsenal physio to be stationed by the goal. Small. And Limpar robs Townsend. Now something could happen now. Wright's gone through. Can he get... Oh, Teal! 
Is it a penalty? The linesman has got his flag across his chest. Penalty kick. There was a delay before Wright went down. And there was also a delay while Martin Bodman looked very hard at the linesman, Malcolm Wright. There's Wright. There's Teal. He caught his right foot. Yes, he did. It's a penalty to Arsenal. Now, surely, at last, the goal famine for Arsenal in the Premiership can end, can't it? They won't have a better chance than this. Ian Wright puts the ball on the spot. No, it hasn't ended. Bosnich by the post. And Wright's penalty still fails to bring Arsenal the goal that they can't seem to get. Well, would you believe that? Merson. And Bosnich hasn't got it this time. Sally! No, it was blocked. And Jensen! Oh, great save again. Well, I think we'll find this was a quite outstanding save by Bosnich. Going to his left, as he did in that UEFA Cup tie the other week. And yes, hand onto post. Terrific stuff. Back in by Shelley, who in fact almost scored in the follow-up. But there was a defender in the way. This was the second save by Mark Bosnich. Now Shelley goes in, and I think uh, Paul McGrath blocked the effort. Over the bar from Jensen, via another flying leap by Bosnich. finished up on the side after that challenge by Houghton. The game has gone on without him. In fact, he's down with his boot off. And a chance perhaps here for Wright to create something. Arsenal down to 10 at the moment. Now Adams. In fact, Winterburn's going to get treatment off the pitch from uh, oh no he's not he's angrily pushed the physio away and come back on just in front of me anyway here's Merson and still and a chance perhaps for Merson all right in there but somehow the ball got lost between them all and it was smothered by Aston Villa it's a corner now is Bosnich injured as Seaman was in the first half it looks to me as if Villa's penalty hero, the Australian goalkeeper, problem, and Nigel Spink will come on. Well, this is to say the least an unusual day. We've had both goalkeepers hurt. Bosnich, the 21-year-old, cannot continue. And unlucky 13 for him. And 35-year-old Nigel Spink, who played last week at Swindon, while Bosnich was in Australia, is on the pitch. There's Keown. <laughs> Nigel Winterburn, who was injured a moment ago. In fact, uh, he's nursing, I think, a damaged hand. This is right. Now, can Arsenal test speak? Having just uh, come on. Person, no, tested by that. It transpires that uh, Mark Bosnich actually sustained his hip injury in saving the penalty. Ron Atkinson forced into a change there early in the second half. Well, the uh, manager standing on the far side. Jensen. Now Limpar. created most of Arsenal's best moments. Here's Dixon. Keown. Right. The turn, yes! At last they've scored a goal. And it had to be Ian Wright, didn't it? Something like 450 minutes and more of Premiership football without a goal. And at last Arsenal click. The ball... Right, he turned away from McGrath, an instant.
Brilliant shot, low down by Spink, the substitute goalkeeper, and Arsenal are in the lead, and it's their first goal in the Premiership since the 25th of September. Adams. Limpa. Had a good match. And here's right again. Good save by Spink. Right trying to just ship it over him as he came out. Well, we've seen a good goalkeeping now by two different Villa custodians. Spink following up with a fine save there, what Bosnich did in the first half. Atkinson witting it. It's a through ball by John Jensen. Right tries to shake off Teal. He's got no with him. It's one of Arsenal's problems back when they break as fast as this. He has to hold up right. Limpa. Campbell is the target, far post. Sally! Not quite. Unlucky Ian Sally. Great position he found there. It's a good move altogether by Arsenal. Lovely header in by Campbell. Sally gets a foot in to product by Spink. McGrath is there again. The 19 year old came close. He scored his first Arsenal goal in midweek. Through to Mercer. Limpa. Limpa shoot. Oh. Arsenal are firing on all cylinders now. In the first half, they weren't firing on any. And it remains to be seen whether it brings a better response from Villa, and it might well do. This is Whittingham. And it's in! The equaliser! Exactly the response they were looking for. Really good play in the build-up by Dalian Atkinson and Whittingham, who scored countless goals for Portsmouth last season, now showing he can do it in the Premiership. David Seaman might have got half a touch, but it was a good finish and off the post. Dalian Atkinson, a lovely through ball here. It split the Arsenal defence. Adams played him on side. Yes, it caught the right knee of Seaman and the post. Whittingham's second goal for Villa since joining them. And on the day, it's 1-1. Certainly, with the league table looking the way it did before the games today, a draw is not much use to either team. And perhaps that's why they're really going for it now. It's Saunders. Comes off Winterburn. Saunders still. Now, good cross. Daly. Good chance. Well played here by Andy Townsend. Good cross with his right foot. And uh, Daly, well, it would have been a spectacular effort, wouldn't it? chanting go Whittingham's name he's certainly given them something to bite on here Arsenal making the pace again though with Merson header out was by Richardson here's Limpar good skill Campbell it's a commendable effort just the value of the quick ball whipped in there by Anders Limpar and the flying header by Campbell It's a good cross. Cool. Campbell was poised for that. It's going to come to. Oh! So 
too close to his first goal for Arsenal. <laughs> this is his 58th match for the club, John Jensen, and he's yet to score. But uh, this would have been a dramatic winner just past the post. Saunders, whitting him in the centre, being joined by Townsend now. That's Townsend! And Villa seem to have snatched it in injury time! Andy Townsend! Delighted Villa supporters, and they seem to have pulled this one right out of the fire. The second minute of stoppage time, and Dean Saunders, from right out on the corner flag, gets the cross in. Townsend comes in, right foot, Seaman unsighted, and have the lead in a match which looked to be Arsenal's at one time, but now it's 2-1 to Villa, who seem to have bounced back from their European disappointment, and Arsenal, having broken their goal famine, still don't seem to be certain of a point, but maybe they will be if Wright can do something here. Extraordinary this second half, and Arsenal have a corner. They've got to snatch something here to save the game. Keown's in there, Adams is in there, they're all in there. But the corner isn't good enough. This is uh, Dixon now. Right's over on the far side! to Arsenal, Aston Villa take the three points, a real smash and grab job, but they did change the game by bringing on the substitute, Ian Wright missed a penalty, or it was saved brilliantly, then he scored, Guy Whittingham, the substitute, equalised for Villa, and then in the stoppage time allowed, Andy Townsend got the winner, a match full of incident in the second half, it all seemed to spark off after Bosnich saved the penalty, he was later injured, but the final score at Highbury, Arsenal 1, Aston Villa 2. Well, I suppose I've got to call that a mixed day for you and Arsenal, Ian. What's your view of it? Um, very disappointed with the penalty miss, obviously. Um, the way it's gone, Villa have won the game in the end. And I've, I take it personally when I miss a penalty and we haven't got the result. You know, I'm very disappointed. You'd give the goalkeeper credit for the save, presumably? Well, I, 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 it's, it's all a bit of a blur. You know, I, I think he got a came off the post. Mm. Well, he must have, but like... Um, you have to give him credit, um, he went the right way, and it's all about a guessing game, and he done well. Great save, not your first penalty save recently, was it? No, it's um, been a bit jammy lately, three on the strap, but uh, I don't know, like I said, penalty is 75% uh, luck. Uh, here it is now. Just, he's hit it quite well. Luckily, he just went onto the, onto the post, bottom post. I don't know how I've done my hip, it looked like a pretty, um, pretty good dive. But, um, I don't know, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Well, that was a super save. But um, Arsenal got caught by a sucker punch right at the end, didn't they, Alan? Unusual for them. Definitely. I mean, the defence is usually strong and resolute. In actual fact, they defended well on the day. But they went one up, they lost the goal, and then they went chasing the game. And just a, a moment of slackness cost them the second goal. Mm -hmm. And they were disappointed with this because when we run it here, putting them heads on, they were all here, the two red shirts have got to be favourite to get their first. A little bit of indecision. Saunders as well because he chases it. But then he's got time to look up and he hits it over. Townsend arrives late on his right peg and it's a great finish and gives Seaman no chance whatsoever. And what a good result it is for Villa, bearing in mind their disappointment in Europe. In They're coming off the back of a bad result in Europe. They're under the cosh for a long time. Arsenal made six or seven great chances but they kept plugging away. Their heads didn't go down, and that's a great three points for them. Now, what about Arsenal? They get seven goals in Europe in midweek. Um, they bring right back into the team today, and he looks the only one likely to score for them. Well, the fact that he played them, you know, uh, what happens here is that underlines what George Graham thinks of him, because his movement today was absolutely magnificent. This is Limpuck, who had a great game. He gets to the byline. Now, what he, he does well here because he waits and waits and waits. Look, he just waits, picks a man out, and Wright's goal there, it's really a bad header, he's got all the goals to aim for. 
and he'll be disappointed with that. But it's his movement off the ball that was magnificent for me today. And it's underlined here again. Limpa, this is a great run, gets past Teal. He's onto it quick here. Teal comes across him, just clips his back leg. It's a penalty kick. He's up quick, he wants to take it himself. Obviously, he should score, but Bosnia should make some magnificent save. Comes off the post, and he should have scored there. But it's Limpa, right combination again. Again, the movement's good. He's through. He's just stretching a bit here. This time it's Spink that brings off a magnificent save. But this is the best move of the game for me. And again, he's touching movement at top class. Little touch, good movement over the top. Comes in his left foot. And it's a good strike, and he's just a bit unfortunate that it goes past the post. This is his goal, and this is probably the hardest chance that he's got. Good ball in from Keown. Great turn, great touch on his left side. And that really is a magnificent goal. And he could have had four or five goals in the day. You're his old boss, of course, Steve. I mean, he used to take the penalties for you, didn't he? Yeah, and he's missed a few as well. And obviously, he'd be disappointed with this. But the great thing about Ian, even with missing them, he wants to take them. And when the whistle goes for a penalty, there's a few heads go down, he steps forward. Yeah, but uh, it was a cracking save, to be fair, wasn't it? Oh, credit to the goalkeeper. Yeah. But I guarantee if, if they played Villa next game and he had a chance for penalties,